Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. So this week we'll be focused a lot on restocking because my stock right now of notebooks mostly it's super super low so I thought I could do a video where I'll show you the whole process and a more in-depth tutorial of how I do my notebooks I'll try this video to be as informative as I can and as complete as I can and I really hope it helps you and that you can start making your own notebooks for your shop or for yourself. So the first thing I'm going to mention is the materials. The questions that I get the most on other videos is the paper that I use, the printer that I use and all that kind of things. Um, so let's start with that. First of all, I just want to say that all the materials that I'm going to mention in this video are the ones that I use right now. I want to make this clear, you don't need any of the materials that I'll be uh, mentioning on this video. As we go, I'll talk about other options that you can have that I used in the beginning. In the beginning, I didn't have a printer, I didn't have a guillotine, I didn't have anything, so I used materials that I already had at home, so I'm going to talk all about that. Of course, the end result and even the process can be a lot easier with the things that I use right now, but I just want to make it clear that you don't need them to do the notebooks that I'll be showing you. First material I want to talk about is paper. And this is the ones that I guess most questions like what paper I use for the covers, what paper I use for the inside of the notebooks, and I'm here to answer you. <laughs> so for the inside of the notebooks, I use recycled paper uh, and I use normal printing paper like ATG GSM, but you can use uh, whatever paper you want. So the paper that I use is from Navigator and I started to use 100% uh, recycled paper, but I changed over time to Navigator because even though the paper it's only 30, made of 30% recycled materials, I know it comes from um, a more eco source and a more eco process. So even though it's not 100% recyclable, at least I know that the process of making the paper and all that kind of things, it's a lot more eco-friendly and that weighs a lot on my decision as well, not uh, just the amount of recycling uh, percentage in the paper. So that's why I use this paper and I really, really love it. Now for the covers, I have a lot of questions of what paper do I use, what GSM of paper do I use, and um, I use 250 GSM matte paper. I always print in A3 sheets uh, because I have an A3 printer and it's a lot faster than I'll just cut the sheets after printing. And the reason I use 250 is I tried with, 200, with 300 and 350 before, but the paper would break a lot. Um, and I really didn't like that, so even though my covers are a little bit thinner with the 250 GSM, they don't break and the notebook has a lot more quality because of that. Then for printer, I use my A3 Canon IX6850. Um, only for the last year I started to print my own covers, I used to print them outside and I really like this printer, the colors are amazing, it can print uh, like in 300 GSM super super easily um, even though I print with 250 but I really really like it and the colors are really great and the quality is just amazing and being able to print in A3 makes everything a lot easier and a lot faster then for the mounting of the notebook itself, I use a bone folder until recently and right now I started to use a scoreboard that I'll be showing you um, later in the video as well, how I use it and how I used to do them before. Um, and it's been a really life saver because it saves so much time because the me measurements are already there. Then for mounting the notebooks, I use a stapler. 
I have one uh, long staple, but you can find a lot um, of models online and it, you have to find one that suits your needs. There are staples that only staple like 20 sheets and staples that can staple until like 100 sheets. So it really depends on what you need. Like if you want to make notebooks with watercolor paper, of course you'll need a bigger stapler that can staple a lot more sheets because watercolor paper it's a lot thicker. Then I also use a press so I can press my notebooks after mounting them. This allows the notebook to be more closed and not to open very easily like the cover and everything. I built my own press, you can buy them online. I've seen a lot of people use like flower presses and stuff like that. I just bought two wood pieces and I did the holes and I mount them together and it was super cheap. I think it was like five euros for the press, but it's super, super easy. You can do it yourself if you want me to do a whole tutorial of how I build my press, leave it in the comments and I'll try to do that as soon as I can. Then I also use my big guillotine, that's how I cut my notebooks. It can cut up to 500 sheets of paper, so I normally can cut up to four to five notebooks at the same time and that made my life so much easier because I can produce the notebooks a lot, lot faster um, and a lot easier. And that's basically all for the materials. Uh, right now I'll start printing the notebooks uh, and I'll take you with me throughout all the process and I'll also show you how I make things exactly and other ways you can make them if you don't have the materials that I have right now. If you have any questions about the materials that I use that I didn't explain until now in the video, please leave them in the comments and I'll try my best to answer them. So yeah, let's get into it. As I told you, I print in A3 so I can fit four A6 notebooks in one sheet and two A5 notebooks in another one. Uh, so I set them up like this on Photoshop and I create some lines so I know where to cut later. And since I already have this all set up, I just need to send it to print. This is normally the phase that takes the longer because it's a lot of covers. So let's go. These are now printing and now we wait. First I print all the fronts of the covers and then I basically turn all the papers and print the backings. These are still printing, so what I normally do is start counting the sheets for the inside of the notebooks. So yeah, let's do that. So for the A5 notebooks, I count A4 sheets. And for the A6 notebooks, I cut this A4 in half and I use A5 sheets like this. I count 15 sheets for each notebook, but this really depends on what you want. I used to do with 20, but the notebook would become too chunky and it would open a lot. Let's count 15 sheets and divide them.
I'm finally printing the backs over here as you can see I'm only missing this ones but it's almost there so as I'm printing the backs on the other notebooks I'm going to start cutting this For cutting the covers, I use this rotary blade thing instead of the big guillotine. Um, this one, it's way easier to cut like this kind of sheets and it's a lot less um, time consuming because with that one you have to spend a lot of time like adjusting and everything. So this is way faster. You can also use like a ruler and an exacto knife. Just make sure you use like a heavy ruler so it doesn't get out of place and make sure you be careful so you won't cut anything that <laughs> it's not meant to be cut. You probably can see but I have like a very thin white line over here where it marks where I need to cut the notebook. I normally do these lines very lightly um, so that if I cut like half a millimeter um, up or down, not like on the spot, it doesn't, it's not very noticeable. Um, I tried for that not to happen, but it can happen, so I do them like this so they won't be very noticeable. The notebooks are all cut um, and the sheets are all counted so it's now quite later, it's only 6.30 now and I've been cutting notebooks until they finish printing and they only finish printing now so you can tell how much time it takes for all the notebooks to to print, it took basically all afternoon. So yeah, it's now quite late, so I'm going home and tomorrow we are going to finish mounting the notebooks and do all of that fun stuff, so see you tomorrow. Welcome to day two of restocking notebooks. So the next step is scoring the covers, so let me show you how I do that. So right now I'm using this scoring board, it has like a lot of uh, marks where you can score the covers and it's an A4 size, so I can fit an A4 uh, cover in here. It comes with this folding thing. I, my honest opinion is this is a little expensive for what it is. I think it cost me around 30 euros. I'll leave links to all the materials that I'm mentioning in the description if you want to check them out. Um, but it has been making my life a lot easier um, because the marks are already here and I'll show you in a second how I do them. Before getting this one, I was using this bone folder and this little T ruler. You can buy, um, you can do it with like a normal ruler. This one only helps because the sheet will be on exactly, exactly like 90 degree angle, so it will be easier for you to mark them. Um, it will take a little bit of time because I will basically need to mark uh, to measure the middle and mark the middle in all the sheets of paper. So with this one it's a lot faster, but you can certainly do it with this. I've been using this for the past year. I only bought this like two months ago. So yeah, you do need to have one of these things. Uh, I only start to buying it when I start to make more notebooks. So yeah, I was basically using a ruler and you can get this like out of um, craft stores and stuff like that. You can find it very easily. So with this one I basically had to put it like this. I would measure where the middle will be and I would mark it with the bone folder and then I would put it like this, put it all straight up and then mark with the bone folder like in the middle. 
with this one is a lot easier so I just need to make sure it's all straight up here in this edge and in this one and then I'll just come here mark the spot like this little heart over here it's the middle for this size this is a six so it's a six this is a a5 sheet sorry <laughs> Um, so it's 10.5, so I just need to mark it and it goes all the way straight over here um, You just need to be careful so it won't move like places But other than that, it's really fast and easy For notebooks, I always do three marks on the paper and I'll show you later why I do that But first, let me show you how I do it With the T ruler, I was just mark like half centimeter one centimeter for the left and one centimeter for the right but since i have this tool now it's a lot easier so i come to these marks where you have like little spaces between them um, and i try to put like the mark that i already have here in one of them and then i'll do one mark on the left like on this one and one mark on the right on this one and then i end up with three marks and now I have three marks like this and I'll show you how, why I do this uh, later when we fold the notebooks. And now let's mark them all. These are all scored, so let's start to put them together with the sheets. These are all done, so we are going to start stapling them. So I use this long stapler that you see over here. I bought it on Staples. <laughs> so this was quite cheap, I think it was like 8 euros or something like that. Um, but I've seen a lot of people doing notebooks without these uh, bigger staplers. To know exactly where I need to staple, I did like this white line on both sides and I aligned this with the line that I scored on the notebook. So let me show you. First of all, before stapling, I try to see if the notebook is as straight as possible um, with the covers and with the inside. And then I put the stapler over here and I try to check the little white mark with the, um, the middle score that we scored before. So I have the little mark over here and I try to align it with the score that we have here in the middle because you would you want to staple you want to staple the notebook on the middle score and leave the other ones without any staplers. So yeah, I just align the little mark with the middle score and I staple them. And that's it. I put two staples in each notebook. They are in the middle score. And so is this one. Having this mark really, really helps. So that way I know exactly where I'm stapling in.
once I finish I like to do um, something that it's putting the the staples like um, down close to the page so that the page won't come out very easily I use this thing over here I have no idea what this is but I asked for something to do this and my dad gave me this so yeah I basically just press it down like this and they are now close to the page of course I try not to bend them like I did in those ones but yeah now the pages are more secure if you don't have anything like this you can also use like an exato knife or the back of a scissor and do it like this so yeah it also works Quick tip, I just noticed that I was doing something wrong, that it's something very simple, but it's stacking the notebooks as you are making them. Uh, I try not to stack them like this, but I wasn't noticing because um, this part over here of the staples can easily mark or leave like some kind of residue in your covers. So I try to, um, to put them like covered to like inside to inside and cover to cover, so that won't happen. And yeah, just a little tip because I already like scratched a lot of notebook covers because of that. Once all of this is done, it's time for the next step that is folding the notebooks. So let me explain. It's quite sunny right now, so sorry if the image sometimes gets too bright or something like that. I went and grabbed like a base to put here so that the sun won't hit the glass directly. Okay, so let's try to fold this one. So what I try to see is if the covers match the little corners over here and over here like this. Can you see? Even though the paper it's off a little bit the covers will match so that means the staple will be in the middle of the book like this and to do that I just press the notebook down and with the bone folder I go from up to down making sure the notebook it's in the right place and fold it like this oh it's so shadowy sorry about that and then I turn over the notebook and I do the same thing on the other side. And it's folded. Remember we, when we scored the notebooks, we did three scores. So let me show you why we did that and what makes uh, and what the difference it makes when folding the notebooks down. So we did three foldings, we did the, the middle one where we put the staple that you can see here and then we did two other ones, one on the left and one on the right. And as you can see they are here and on this one. So basically what this does doing the three folds is that you get sort of a, a bind over here like a rectangular and it's way easier to bend the notebook because the cover is thick so having these three scores on the notebook um, other than making way easier to fold the notebook on this face but also gives you like a more nicer finishing touch I really like how it looks and I think it has uh, it has a more professional touch to the notebook. It has been quite a journey to until I got to this place with my techniques and making notebooks. So I hope you appreciate all the tips that I'm giving and that can save you a lot of time and materials because I know the amount of time and materials it takes for you to perfect a technique. So I really hope this video is helping so far. And if you watch this far, yeah, you.
it's press time so as you can see the notebooks are a little chunky so they need to be pressed so they can be thinner and a lot nicer so let's put them in the press when getting them ready to be pressed um, leave them like this like um, one like this and another one like this because if you put them all on the same side they will get bent so this way they stay like straight even with a lot of pressure on on top of it I know this looks awful but I promise it does the job so as you can see over here on the press like the notebooks look like this and this is how they look like with the books on top another question that I get the most about making notebooks is how long I leave my books my notebooks on the press so I basically try to leave them as much time as I can. Uh, if I'm in a rush, I try to leave them at least one to two hours. Uh, but if I have time, I try to leave them at least overnight so they are nicely pressed. Um, but it really depends on the cover that you are using, on the side that you are using and also on the thickness of the notebook. So if you do, if you do a thicker uh, notebook, of course you'll have to press it um, a little longer. But I always try to press it at least one hour um, so they will be uh, a little bit thinner. Uh, and it will look a lot better but yeah I basically try to leave them as long as I can but for the sake of this video I'm just going to leave them for an hour or two so we can finish the notebooks today and not tomorrow <laughs> so yeah they are now on the press for an hour, an hour and a half, so I'm going to take them out of the press and we are going to the last phase that is cutting on the big guillotine, so let's go! Okay, so this is the big guillotine, this is where I cut all my notebooks. Um, I'm using a cardboard over here because I have this machine for two years now and the blade still cuts very very nicely but this red thing over here already has a lot of marks and a big um, sulk over here so um, if I don't cut with a cardboard um, the paper gets eaten because it has like a really big hole over here and the paper gets inside and gets eaten so I use a cardboard um, so that doesn't happen and uh, the notebook sits on top of this um, cardboard this basically you can mark where you want your notebook to be cut and then when you uh, when it's okay you just um, roll it out and now it's like fixed uh, so that the notebook won't leave its place and you know exactly like how many centimeters you're cutting okay let's set this up so i'm going to put the measurement around 14.6 so i can have a little bit of a margin i normally do all the same measurements every time i'm cutting notebooks so i already know more or less which ones i can use now to put the notebooks inside I'm going to need to get this lever up so I'm going to rotate this one over here and you can see the lever it's going up. As you can see over here I have the four notebooks and I still have space to put one or two more but I won't do that and I explain why. So basically if I'll have to, if I put another one or two more I'll need to release the lever a little bit more 
and as you can see it gets way too closer to the blade and when I was starting out I used to do that I used to cut as much as I could uh, at the same time and I almost lost two nails so please don't do that cut less and don't be too close to the blade so the no notebooks are now in place I try to put them back as much as I can so they um, are uh, touching the bar over here and the lever will block the notebooks so that they can't move like as you can see they can't move at all so basically this will make so that when the blade cuts the notebook won't move so let's make a cut to cut i need to press this lever here this basically will uh, make this one um, free this is just a safety measurement so i press this and i come down with the blade and this normally I really need to push. This looks easy, but I have to do like a lot of strength to cut the notebooks. Now we need to release them, so let's turn the lever. So that is it for today's tutorial, which I'm sure it's already super super long but as I said in the beginning of the video I wanted this tutorial to be as complete as I could and it's a really time-consuming product to do but I love it, I love the fine result, I love all the process even if some tasks are a little more tedious I really really like it and I get in the zone and it's just one of my favorite things to do so I hope with this video you get inspired and motivated to start as well if you are afraid because you don't have certain materials don't worry I also started with just a ruler and exato knife and stuff like that so I'm going to end this video here if there's something that I didn't mention in this video please leave the um, a question in the comments or something like that all the materials that I mentioned throughout the video will be linked in the description most of the products that I bought are from Amazon so I'm going to leave all the links to all the products so you can check that out check them out and buy them if you want I've been making notebooks for two years now, so I feel like already improved a lot. And yeah, I really hope that can help you. See you guys next video and I hope you enjoyed this one. So yeah, talk to you soon. Also, if this is the first video you're seeing from my channel, please go subscribe if you enjoyed this video. So talk to you soon. Bye.